Hi, it's Cynthia, and I am with Pangos again today. This is Penget and Pangu. Say hi, guys. Today we are continuing our lesson on screenplay writing, and Penget had a question. What was your question? Oh, okay. What's the difference between a feature film screenplay and a television hour-long screenplay? Well, really, they are similar in that they both tell a story. They both have a beginning, middle, and end. A television episode is generally a series, and that series continues. So it's really in terms of the way that you tell the story. For a series, you would have a story within that one episode that would conclude. It would have a satisfying ending but then you'd also have enough parts set up usually in terms of your character development that would lend itself to continuing on for more episodes your feature film would have a contained story so you would have a beginning middle and end just like you would in a television episode and you would make sure that it would have a conclusion that's satisfying again at the end of probably an hour and a half to two hours now that doesn't mean when we talk about a, a satisfying end, it doesn't mean that you can't have an ending which is sad or um, is completely close to the point that all of your characters are dead or happily ever after type of thing. You can absolutely have open-ended storylines, but the main storyline, or at least the main reason why your audience is sitting there for an hour and a half to two hours, should have some kind of conclusion that allows your audience to feel as though that they have closure to where why they were in that seat for an hour and a half to two hours to begin with, and they should be satisfied with what they've seen and what has happened to the main characters and situations that are set up in that feature. Oh, okay, yes. How do you read a screenplay? Okay, so let's quickly look at that, and then we're going to look at how we might map out story arcs. This is just a sample screenplay from a television series called All Rise. And you'll see at the very top page, it says teaser. And then the very first line after that says interior, I-N-T, stands for interior, courthouse, basement, bullpen, morning. Now, this line is called the slug line. The slug line is the line that tells production pretty much what they need to know to get started. So the thing that's so different about a screenplay versus a novel or an essay or a short story or any other written piece is that it not only tells a story, but it also acts as a manual, a production manual, a manual so that everyone on your production knows exactly what they're supposed to do, mostly just by reading the screenplay. So here we have the first line after the slug line, we have capital letters, close on, a German shepherd's face, smiling, that's blackjack, capital letters again. Then another smiling dog, a Rottweiler, that's Harley. Then the sound of man's voice. Okay, so what does all of that mean? Well, what it means is that the capital letters are the first thing to pay attention to. The capital letters are those aspects that the screenplay writer is telling us are important to pay attention to. So the first line, which is the close on a German shepherd's face. So that tells me as the reader, this is an important aspect of the story that is about to unfold. Additionally, Blackjack is the name that tells me since the writer didn't just name it a big dog, the writer gave the dog a name in capital letters. The capitalization of the name tells me this isn't the first or last time I'm going to see Blackjack. Next is similar with the other dog, the Rottweiler dog named Harley. Harley is also capitalized, which again tells me I should pay attention to who Harley is because it's very likely since it's capitalized that Harley will become important to the story. Then I have a man, not named, just a man. That is important too. It tells the reader that this man may only be seen right now for this one scene, or as this is saying, this parenthetical says, oh, dot, 
uh, O period, C period, close parenthetical. That means that I don't see the man yet because the O dot C dot means off camera. So this man I, might become an interesting part of the, the storyline, but I don't know that yet. So it's a man's voice off camera that says, thank you for committing your crimes in Los Angeles County. So let's take a quick look at what that means. The OC off camera means that that person is not in view at all. They may not even be, be in the direct vicinity. They may be just a voice that might be on a speaker somewhere that just hasn't been identified yet as to where that voice is coming from. Blackjack and Harley watch as prisoners. That's capitalized too. That also means I have to log that because it's important. It means that I see these prisoners I'm supposed to pay attention to. They have something to do with the story. File out of a LASD transport into the basement of the LA County Courthouse. Men and women, mostly men, cuffed, heading to separate lockups. The man's same voice, I'm, because it says man, if it, if it was a different man's voice, it would say man number two. But since this is the same man, then I know it's the same voice. Off camera, and it also says continued. So that tells me again, it's the same voice. I don't care if you haven't eaten all week or made a phone call all day, not my problem. Now we identify the voice is coming from a rough looking deputy sheriff named Billy Witz. And again, that's capitalized. That tells me I have to pay attention to who Billy Witz is. Think Dennis Leary with a crew cut. And then Witz's line, you don't scare me. You don't intimidate me. You sure as hell don't impress me. Okay, so thinking that one the line, think Dennis Leary with a crew cut tells me in my mind as I read, what I should be imagining in, in, in this character wits and what their voice might sound like. The fact that it was capitalized tells me in terms of on a production level, it tells a casting person, okay, I have to cast this speaking actor named, and that character will sound like Dennis Leary, have a crew cut and um, basically be Billy Wits. And then next up I have close on, the sweet, nervous face of one of the prisoners, Daphne Irving, 19. Okay, again, this tells me I have a character that is named. It tells the casting director I have to cast an actress named Daph who will be named Daphne, and she's about 19 years old, right? So these, the use of capital letters, the use of emphasis on these areas is important to tell the production crew what they're doing. And by the way, you capitalize a character's name the first time that they appear on the page of the screenplay and not again. All the other times that that character's name appears will not be capitalized. There's a very important reason why that is. The important reason why you capitalize a character's name only the first time they appear is because in terms of a casting um, situation, when a casting director looks at this screenplay, they will be circling all of the names that are in, in capital letters. And if you capitalize, let's say that character Daphne on page one, and you also capitalize them on page 20, casting director will be casting two separate actresses because they will assume that there are two women named Daphne. Capitalize the character the first time and then all the other times in the screenplay do not capitalize it. Right, okay about story arcs. All right, let's turn our attentions then to our whiteboard. In any story, there will be an act one, an act two, and an act three. The beginning always establishes a routine. Pretty easy. This is their home. This is their school. This is who they talk to every day. Basically a routine. Next up, we have something called the inciting incident. The inciting incident is the event that gets us into the story. From the inciting incident, we have rising conflict or action, depending on how you might want to define it, either is fine. We will have Carol as act two continues, and we'll have a climax somewhere. It could be close to the end of act two, or it might be into act three. And then we will likely have falling conflict, or falling action, At the end, we will have some kind of a resolution. And this would be so for 
any story, whether it be a screenplay that is a feature length screenplay, or if it is a screenplay, which is for a television episode. If you connect these, you'll start to see the shape of it and why we call it an arc. Pretty straightforward, I think. And how does this differ from television? So what I've just mapped out pretty much is a feature film, but for television, it doesn't change very much at all. Your acts just increase to generally five acts. And I added a teaser at the beginning. Now the teaser is something that you would see likely in both television and film because the teaser is just basically a part of act one that acts as kind of like your grabber that grabs your audience in quickly. Oh, that's not a trick. It's just one of those areas that make it more enjoyable for the audience because your audience wants to come in right in the thick of it and know what it is that they're going to be watching, right? Right, okay. So I hope you've enjoyed this video mm -hmm. and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.